Okay, chapter 13, trigonometry, and more specifically, chapter 13-1, right triangle trigonometry. So we're going to be talking about today. When we get into right triangles, we're going to introduce some vocabulary that you've seen before, so this shouldn't be too much uh, of a new thing. But just in case you forgot, uh, this little Greek symbol here uh, is called theta. A theta, T-H-E-T-A, and that's what we use to represent the missing angle. Just like we use X or Y to represent missing sides, uh, we're going to use theta to represent a missing angle or uh, a given angle. And then we're going to look at sides, uh, the relationship to sides and theta. So for instance, this side over here, well, it's opposite theta, so it is the opposite side. That's the easiest one to find. Um, next is the hypotenuse. Um, the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. Regardless of where your theta is, the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. And then you have the adjacent side. Well, if you forget what the adjacent side is, you know the hypotenuse is across from the right angle. You know that the opposite side is opposite theta. The only one left is the adjacent side. Or you can think about uh, the adjacent side is the side closest to the angle that's not the hypotenuse. So uh, whichever way you want to go about that um, doesn't matter to me. So these are our six trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent. These are the most commonly used. Um, when we talk about right triangle, tri right triangle trigonometry, this, this is what we're going to deal with. So sine of theta is the opposite over hypotenuse. This is a ratio. So the sine of theta is the ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse side. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangents opposite over adjacent. And you've seen a little mnemonic that you probably used in geometry to remember this. And that was SOKOTOA. And this, you know, spells it right out. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cotangent adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent opposite over adjacent. So it's just a nice mnemonic to help you remember what it is. These, uh, these are called inverse trig functions. The, the cosecant, secant, and cotangent, they're actually the reciprocal or the opposite of the sine, cosine, and tangent. So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, and cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. If you look, they're flipped, right? Opposite over hypotenuse, well, hypotenuse over opposite. Adjacent over hypotenuse, hypotenuse over adjacent, and, and so on and so forth. There is no nice, neat, mnemonic um, that's gotten popular. I like to you know create my own here. Let's call it um, uh, Choshikau. C-H-O. S-H-A-C-A-O, Choshikau. Uh, it's not cut on yet, but I got a feeling this is going to be real popular here soon. If you don't remember Choshikau, just remember uh, Sokotoa. Moving on. All right, so special right triangles. Here we have triangles that are um, used a lot. We look at these specific angles. Um, these are the angles in the unit circle we're going to talk about later. But you've see, again seen these triangles before when you dealt with geometry. These, these types of triangles are all over the ACT along with the Pythagorean triples, the 3, 4, 5 triangles, uh, the 5, 12, 13 triangles. And the first one's a 45, 45, 90, which is an isosceles right triangle. And this is the only way you can have an isosceles right triangle. And you have a 45 degree angle congruent with another 45 degree angle, which means you have two congruent sides. And regardless of what these side lengths are, this hypotenuse is always that side length times the square root of 2. So, for instance, if my side length or my leg length was 2, then my hypotenuse would be 2 square root of 2. Similarly, if you were given the hypotenuse, you could find the legs. So, if I was given the hypotenuse is 2 square root of 2, I know that it's equal to x square root of 2. Divide both sides by square root of 2, you get x equal to 2, right? That's how, that's how you do it backwards. And we'll look more on that in a second. 30, 60, 90 triangle, again a popular triangle. Um, the side opposite the 30, the 30 is the smallest angle, so we're going to start there. The side opposite the 30 is x. The side opposite the 60 is x square root of 3. And the side opposite the right angle, or the hypotenuse, is 2x. And regardless of what values I plug in, I can find out the other. So let's say x is 3. All right, so x equals 3. That means that the side opposite the 60 is going to become 3 square root of 3. And the side opposite the 2x is going to be 2 times 3, which is 6. 
Now, I said I would show you an example. Let's say, for instance, you're given a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and you're given that the 60 side, let me just draw it. Uh, that's a sad excuse for a triangle, but you know we're going to go with it. This is 60, this is 30, and this is the right angle. Let's say that you're given this side length down here is, um, let's say, 6. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Let's say 6. Okay, so you know the side opposite the 60 is 6. Well, the side opposite the 60 in a 30, 60, 90 triangle is always x squared of 3. So I know that 6 is equal to x squared of 3. Always. So 6 is equal to x squared of 3. I can solve for x. I just divide both sides by square root of 3. So x equals 6 over square root of 3. Um, rationalize the denominator. So we got 6 square root of 3 over 3, which simplifies to 2 square root of 3. This becomes a 2. 2 square root of 3. So my x is equal to 2 square root of 3. That would be my short side. And then I could find the long side just by saying, okay, well, if this is x, I double it, so this would be 4 square root of 3. So even if you're given um, a side other than the 30, you can still find, or the side opposite the 30, you can still find all three sides. Using the fact that the, uh, the side opposite the 60 is always x squared of 3. The hypotenuse is always 2x. And the side opposite the 30 is always x. So you can figure out every side if you're given one of them in a special right triangle. And the same thing applies for the 45, 45, 9 triangle. It's just a lot easier to do. All right, so let's look at some examples. Oh, I forgot the table. Uh, first, let's look at the table. Uh, here's our sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent, our six trig functions of our most commonly used angles, our 30, um, 45, and 60 um, angles. If you're not, if you don't know why I don't have, if, if you don't know why I don't have 90 degrees up here, um, try to find the sine and cosine and tangent of 90 degrees and see how that works out. Well, let's just look at 30 for instance, real quick. Uh, 30, it says the sine is one half. That means of a 30 degree angle, the sine opposite or the, the opposite side in the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is always twice the opposite side of a 30 degree angle. Which makes sense, right? Because if the side opposite 30 is x, the hypotenuse is 2x. 2x is twice the size of x. So these are our trig functions for our 30, 45, and 60 degree angles. And you'll become real familiar with these over the next couple weeks. So let's evaluate some trig um, functions of theta. Evaluate trig functions of theta just means we're going to find all the trig functions. So first of all, I need all three sides of my triangle. Well, here I'm given 9 and 12 as the two legs. I'm missing the hypotenuse. Um, hopefully with some practice over the next couple days, you'll recognize this as a four, uh, 3, 4, 5 triangle. This is a Pythagorean triple. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 3 is 12. So 5 times 3, or 15, is my missing hypotenuse. So now I'm just going to go through and write in all my trig functions and simplify them. All right, so sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Well, the opposite of theta is 12. The hypotenuse is 15, so that simplifies into 3 fifths. Oh, I can't divide, apparently. 4 fifths, sorry. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is 9. So that's 9 over 15, and this simplifies to 3 fifths. And lastly, tangent is opposite over adjacent. In this case, opposite is 12, adjacent is 9, so this simplifies to 4 thirds. So I told you this was a Pythagorean triple, just like a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And I also told you earlier that the sine, cosine, and tangents are ratios. So it makes sense that the sine of um, a 9, 12, 15 triangle is the same as a 3, 4, 5 triangle because those ratios are the same. 12 to 15 is the same as 4 to 5. So it's just kind of, you can make this triangle however big you want it to as long as it follows these angles and these side lengths, 
your ratios are going to be the same. Your sine and cosine and tangent are going to be the same. All right, so let's look at our inverses. All we do here for cosecant is flip this. So this becomes 5 fourths. Secant, we flip this. So it's 5 thirds. Cotangent is 3 fourths. So once you have the first three, the, the next three are really easy to find. All right, moving on. Let's find uh, some missing sides. All right, so first we're going to find the missing side without using a calculator. So first we've got a missing side x, a missing side y. We're looking at theta equal to 60 degrees. But if you notice real quick, this is a 60 and a 90. That means that this missing side right here is 30 degrees. This is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So again, going back to the example I did, there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can see that this 9 is the opposite of the 60. So that means that this equals x squared root of 3. Or you could use any variable there. I keep writing 2's for 3's. x squared root of 3. So you can solve it that way. Or you can solve it using your trig functions. I'm going to solve it both ways. Uh, first with the trig function. So I'm looking at, uh, let's solve for y. So for involving y, we're looking at 60. We're looking at the opposite side and the adjacent side. So that's tangent. So the tangent of 60 degrees equals the opposite, which is 9, over the adjacent, which is y. Now we're going to solve for y. So y equals 9 over tangent of 60 degrees. And I'm going to put this into my calculator. Uh, hey, look, it's already there. So y equals 5.2. So y equals 5.2. Next, I'm going to do the same thing for the sine, work all the way down, and I'm going to get sine of 60 degrees equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. So 9 over x. So x equals 9 over the sine of 60 degrees, which I've already done that also, is 10.4. So at any time, remember, you can stop this video and, uh, and go through it a little bit slower. But we got 10.4 and 5.2. Now the other way we could have solved this is knowing that x squared 3 is equal to 9. The side opposite the 60 is equal to 9. So if I just solve this real quick, x squared 3 is equal to 9. So x equals um, 9 divided by the square root of 3. And you can put that straight in your calculator. Uh, do 9 divided by the square root of 3. Or you could say, okay, if I simplify this, I want to multiply by the square root of 3 over square root of 3. This is 9 square root of 3 over 3. So this simplifies into 3 square root of 3. And you can put that in your calculator. Uh, whether it's asking for an exact answer, sometimes this answer, 3 squared 3, could be on a test. Sometimes a decimal answer, um, 5.2, could be on a test. You never know. This is why it's helpful to know how to solve it in a, multiple, in a multitude of different ways. All right, so let's look at some more examples. This time we're going to use a calculator. Well, we already did that, so we're going to skip that example. Moving on. Example four, and the last thing we're going to talk about is the angle of depression and angle of elevation. Um, angle of depression is when you start from the top and you look down. Angle of depression is you start from the bottom, or angle of elevation is you start from the bottom and elevate or look up. So angle of elevation might be you're standing on the, on the ground and you look up at the top of the building. You know, the angle of elevation is this, uh, and, such and, and so on and so forth. Um, so these are just some vocab terms um, that you'll see in some word problems. Angle of depression and angle of elevation. So let's look at this word problem. Uh, we have a ski slope, we got an angle of elevation, and we got, we're trying to find how long is the ski slope. Okay, to save time, I went ahead and drew the figure. Here we have our little man skiing down the slope. The angle of elevation from the ground to the top is 25.2 degrees. And the vertical height of the slope is 1808. So we're going to look at solving for x. We're solving for how long is the slope. So we're looking at um, our angle is 25.2, opposite over hypotenuse, that's sine. So the sine of 25.2 equals 1808 over x. So x equals 1808 over 25.2. 
put that in your calculator.